Hey YouTube, it's been a long time since I've made any videos, so uh, apologies for that. But um, what I wanted to do is I've, I've recently had a big kind of change around with my studio. And I used to have a load of hardware synths all along here and some racks of stuff over here. And I've had to sell all that because I'm about to move. Um, we've just had a new baby as well, so it was just, it was not feasible to keep that here at the moment. And it got me thinking about what you need at home and you know what what do you need to make music at home whether your preference is hardware or software doesn't really matter but you don't actually need that much so i just wanted to run through my little setup here um and even that's overkill for for a lot of you guys so first and foremost you're going to need a computer um a couple of options i mean i've i've got an old my, this is my old door pedals for driving this is my old um kind of pc I think it's an i5 20. I, I didn't, don't even know what's in it. It's not that fast. i5 quad with eight gigs of RAM, and I had a really small SSD in it. And it started playing up lately because I've had it a couple of years, and it's getting full up. So I've just built myself a new i7 with 16 gigs and loads of SSD storage in there. But I haven't got everything installed on this yet, so I'm not running it properly. And then for mobile stuff, I've got the MacBook over here, which is also an i7. But that's mainly for doing video work because doing videos and recording screen on, on PC is just a pain in the ass. So I bought the Mac for that. Um, so you've got a computer. You can get away with quite, quite mediocre specs if you're using an i5 quad um, and 8 gigs of RAM. And I'd probably go for like 250 gig SSD drive. That's more than enough to get you started. And I can run, um, on here I can run kind of 80 to 100 channel projects on here quite easily as long as you don't use stuff like diva and some of those look forward limiters that, that, that use a lot of cpu you'll be fine using zebra or silent or hive is another good one massive's a little bit chewy sometimes but you know you can get away with an i5 easily um, the other thing you're going to need is an audio interface you can use um, aso asio for all but it's it's quite buggy and it, i don't like it I mean, mine, mine here is this RME Fireface 400, which I bought for Simon Bostock for about 350 quid. And this has got eight input channels and loads of outputs, and it's got optical stuff on it that I'm not even using at the moment. But the, the latency on this is brilliant, and the MIDI on this is very good as well. It's very tight MIDI. But you don't need to spend that much money. The one I had before this was a Steinberg UR22, which is really cheap, really good quality inputs, good drivers, and... Um, the build quality is great as well. And I think it's better than the equivalent Focusrite ones because I've had a Sapphire 6 before, which is great, but the Steinberg stuff is better. It's just, it's just way better, so that's the one I'd go for. Um, you'll also need software. I've got Cubase running on here. Um, I've also got Live. Sorry if this is out of focus, but I'm using my phone for this, so it's a bit crappy. So I've got Cubase and Live on the PC, and I've got Cubase Live, and I've got Logic 9 on the Mac. Well, I don't really like using Logic. I find Logic a bit clunky. But really what you need to do is you need to find a door that you like and stick with it, because they all do the same thing. It's just about how you like to work. So, so stuff like um, FL Studio and Ableton Live, they're kind of geared up for using loops, and if that's the way you want to work, use them. You don't need to worry about somebody else using another door because they all do the same thing. Um, one of the most important things you're going to need to think about is monitoring. So I've got these two Dynaudio BM5A Mark IIs, I think they are, and I've got them sitting on these ISO acoustic stands. Focus. No, it won't focus. Because what these do, these, these kind of decouple the monitors from the desk a little bit and they really tighten up the stereo field. Um, they tighten up the bass a little bit as well, but this room is just, it's, this is the worst possible room you could mix in, so I'm kind of fighting a lost cause with that. But they, you know, every little bit helps. So these, these I mix on, well, actually Matrix anymore, for getting the balance and the overall levels right. I find it very difficult to do levels on headphones. But I've also got these K701s, these AKGs, these are open back headphones. So these are really good for mid-range and listening to reverb tails and detail, which I find difficult to get on the monitors in this room at the moment. And I've also got these two K271, these are closed. These are great for recording, so if I'm recording vocals, 
you don't get any leak or you get very little leak sound leak from these into the microphone um, my little Rode Procaster there which I use for recording voice and the final thing is your controller keyboard now if you don't play piano I would still recommend you get one of these because you can learn and playing the notes in is not the same as clicking them in on a MIDI roll on your door it's just not the same thing and you can pick up some basics you can pick up scales I can't play and talk at the same time you can pick up scales and you can pick up chords and intervals as you go you know if you if you just do a little bit each day practice for half an hour each day you'll, you'll start to be able to play little melodies and you can kind of improvise you can just you know piss around on the keyboard and you'll come up with something that you probably wouldn't have done just by tapping away with your mouse now mine is uh, I can't even remember what I've got here it's a Nectar Impact LX61 these are dirt cheap I think this was about 150 pounds um, it's it hasn't got aftertouch but it's a fairly good keyboard it's got loads of controls on it and I've got assignable drum pads and you got your pitch and mod wheels and this this is a better interface to write music on than that thing there it, it just works better even if you can't play you're going to come up with stuff you wouldn't have done with a mouse and the final thing that I found surprisingly important is your screen because I had um, I had a little Samsung 21 inch screen before which is fairly decent quality but um, you couldn't really see that much at the same time so I splashed out on this IPS this is really cheap as well actually it's AOC it's probably I think a couple of hundred quid 27 inch IPS screen um, but I got a 1080p one because I want the I think it's called the dot pitch to be bigger I don't want to be squinting at tiny tiny little pixels um, and that's it really I mean this 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 setup if you, if you had an i5 based computer you're probably going to spend about 500 pounds or 700 dollars these monitors were 500 uh, yeah 500 ish pounds but you don't need to spend that much you can you can get much cheaper monitors just avoid those KK rockets people say they're okay they're not they're shit so just avoid them um, alternatives are the JBL LSR series you can get five or eight inch ones also the Yamaha HS series I had some HS 80s before they were fantastic just too big for this room um, and they're all better than those KRK ones the interface I don't know if I mentioned already Steinberg UR22 which I think is about £100 maybe a little bit more a little bit less and some headphones one one pair that I want to get is these um, Audio Technica ATH M50s which I think are quite cheap they're supposed to be very very good so if you're going to use headphones um, take a listen to those but otherwise these AKG ones are really cool too I've only got two pairs because I do recording sometimes so that's pretty much it I mean you can you can get away with I don't know for somewhere between a thousand and fifteen hundred pounds you can you can get quite a decent setup um, and just you know get going don't buy too much stuff because you buy too much stuff and you don't know what you're doing you're just gonna sit there scratching your head reading manuals and asking questions all the time so that's it for now let me try and get this to focus again if you've got any questions about setting a, a studio up just um, click below or ask below I haven't used YouTube for a while so be patient and I think what I'll do in the next video I might still start talking about plugins and what you need or not what you need what you might want to get and um, what the options are so see you then